to one and all. On behalf of the Department of Architecture, I welcome each one of his participants to this uh, alumni lecture series. So uh, this is uh, uh, it was started on as part of our Silver Jubilee celebration, 1995-2020. The Department of Architecture is actually stepping into its uh, 26th academic year now. Mm -hmm. And I've actually taken this uh, alumni lecture series uh, to this online platform. This is facilitating us also to connect to a larger number of participants, also to our uh, multifaceted alumni who are placed uh, across India and as well as abroad. So today is uh, one such session, is the ninth lecture of the series, which is a profound session on uh, architecture in Singapore. So today we have with us our uh, Dean Faculty of Architecture and Planning, Dr. C. V. Subramanian, our Head of the Department, Architect Ramesh Babu, and the Speaker of the Day, Architect Natalia Trotsky. Oh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, this is me, Architect Uma Mautika, Alumni Coordinator from the Department. Along with me, as part of the organizing committee, we also have with us architect Bala Hari Krishnan, assistant professor, and uh, Ms. Uh, Sri Harshini and uh, Ms. Dakshita, both the architecture students who are actually coordinating the session today. So I once again welcome each one of you to this uh, interesting session today. So make the best use of it. On that note, I now invite our Dean, Faculty of Architecture and Planning, Dr. C. Subramanian, to deliver the welcome address. Good evening to all the participants throughout the world who have been connecting and a few more joining in the meanwhile. And uh, today's uh, speaker, architect uh, Natalia Trotsky, and uh, we have a good number of uh, students, participants, and architects from various parts. It is, uh, it is going to be an uh, interesting talk. Really, we are happy to have uh, a speaker from uh, Singapore. A few years back, uh, Periyarmani Institute of Science and Technology uh, has inaugurated its uh, alumni association at uh, Singapore. So a good number of uh, architects in uh, Singapore, our own alumni are also part of it. And today we are uh, connecting one of the distinguished alumni, happy about that. And there are a few more alumni from Singapore who have uh, shown their uh, wishes to talk with the current students and make this alumni lecture series talk a more interesting one. So I once again uh, welcome on behalf of the department and I wish the organizers, the alumni coordinators and the student coordinators and all the participants, this program will be more uh, interactive also after a talk of uh, maybe around 20 to 30 minutes talk. And uh, I think Natalia Trotsky was also not uh, um, she was not an academician, so she was telling how I'm going to address to all the students. Then we are told, like, you have good uh, practice and good number of projects you have taken, like. So it will be, we'll be happier if she chats about the projects which she has done and the learning experience, a lot of achievements which she has done. And she has promoted up to the level of director in the particular uh, architectural firm. We wish her uh, furthermore growth in the organization in which she works. Thank you for the opportunity given to me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I request our head of the department, Architect Ramesh Babu, to brief on the topic of the lecture today. Yeah, um, good evening, uh, one and all. Uh, good evening, all the participants, um, and good evening to the speaker, uh, Architect Nadal Natalia, madam. Um, and I uh, thank you uh, for uh, making this uh, wonderful lecture for us. And especially this platform is going to be a wonderful platform where uh, uh, you, there is a direct interaction between the seniors, uh, the uh, students who are uh, directly in uh, link with the alumni. So this is again uh, a program for strengthening the network. So coming to talk about the uh, program today. It is about uh, the architecture and the practice which is being happening in Singapore. And I suppose um, architect Natalia will be briefing about the architectural trends in Singapore. Uh, Singapore is a very uh, nice country, interesting country, very beautiful country. Uh, with uh, it, It's a very small country, around 700 to 750 square kilometers only. But if you look at the population density, it will be around 8,000 people per square kilometer. So that tells you the 
density of the built environment and um, i hope uh, as she has done uh, quite a lot of uh, housing projects uh, it will be more interesting to watch her lecture in the way how uh, the architecture is going ahead in with this small note i will leave it to the speaker and i thank one and all thank you thank you thank you sir so introducing the speaker of the day architect natalia trotsky is an eminent alumna belonging to the third batch of periyar manima institute of science and technology pncw she began her career as a junior architect in an international company sony ericsson in singapore she had gained extensive knowledge and understanding to design and construct using streamlined methods during crisis mitigation risk and project management she had wide experience in working with design and project management for individual clients firms and as well as for uh, government contracts in singapore and other countries her project has received numerous awards multiple uh, times namely safety award productive and innovative award whsh sharp awards and hdb construction awards uh, she holds an mba where she concentrated uh, more on sustainable architecture and temporary structure uh, in the crisis period like uh, covid 19 immigrant work workers uh, housing and frontline treatment facility she also got promoted as a business development specialist and have uh, become one of the directors of the current uh, company so i'm uh, really really very happy in uh, inviting her to share her work experience and ideology with us today thank you for accepting Thank you for invitation ma'am and to be present with us uh, what we did today so i request you to take over the session ma'am over to you maybe uh, thank you so much uh, good evening to everyone so uh, as i introduce some natalia natalia trotsky um, thank you so much for this opportunity actually i have to thank first mr cv sir as <laughs> you Then next one is uh, Mr. Ramesh Babu and Uma. Thanks a lot. Okay, so I would like to start the presentation with the architecture in Singapore. Because I have chosen few buildings which was actually addition to Singapore skyline. Because now the skyline has been changed from last time, so we have new additions of uh, lots of buildings comes in. and a beautiful architecture to explore and inform i mean like how to say is something like information to the world that we are also growing in a architecture site also so you can uh, see the singapore skyline is uh, very beautiful and very unique and they really make it as a unique so first i start from the interlace condo it is used as a parametric architecture you can see this parametric architecture is in a um <laughs> parametric architecture in a, even in the our jaipur palace and every everything in india also so sorry for the interruption so this one is actually is a, it's a, about a decking of uh, apartment blocks so this one is interesting is is about is actually you can is is focus on all, all the directions so if you take in one block is is focus in every side of the direction like north west east so it it gives an interesting aspect for people who is choosing their direction particularly is a sunset a sunrise or sunset which one they want to see and especially this one is a condominium is actually if you know that condominium have all kind of uh, activities the activities inside the building so it's like you no need to go for anything outside so it's really make it as a beautiful an interesting architecture is combined of a 31 stack apartments which you can see in the slides and there will be lots of uh, social and uh, social spaces and is in actually is in uh, near to the center of uh, singapore so singapore is a country is a very small so they really uh, play a big part uh, using this kind of apartments to make it is more interesting and also cater for all the people because the population is high now so for that population they really want to interact uh, interact all their uh, race you know malay and chinese and uh, indians and everybody in that particular condominium or one particular hdb i mean housing board developments so next one we can go to the jewel changi airport 
This is the next interesting uh, architecture. In Singapore uh, Airport, it's like uh, we have oh. four terminals. So this terminal, actually, the first terminal, which is just was last time, it was just an airport. Now they really change into uh, different aspects. When you go to the airport, you feel relaxing and uh, shopping, and it's open to public. So it's like a totally a different atmosphere. You don't feel like that you are going inside the airport. It's mostly in a commercial, and also there is a lots of retail. Uh, which you can do a uh, shopping and other things also, other activities, restaurants, hotels, services, airline packages, and everything. And uh, you know, another one more thing, interesting matter in this thing is the architect. The architect actually is a very bold, he loves to have a bold buildings. So you can see the shape is something like a very interesting and he loves to in the, see he plays with the glass and steels in everywhere. The next one, the inter and uh, the more interesting part in this jewel is uh, the rain vortex, is which all the time you can see the water there. It's more interesting and really bring it all the waters in one place. It's, it's beautiful, beautiful to see and attract more tourists because Singapore is based on tourism also. So one of the main criteria. So attraction of tourists is this airport has been like become one of the very beautiful ones. The next one is Marina Bay Sands. This also is become, uh, the same architect which he, he designed. Very, uh, Marina Bay Sands is actually is an uh, undescribable building. It's, it's, it's very beautiful and you can name it whatever you want it, you can have it in that building. It's five story uh, below and I mean they have an underground five story and upper office about. 55 story, then they will connected with the three uh, towers in a one terrace, roof terrace. Then the terrace, you can have a sky park, a swimming pool, a restaurants, bars, and everything's there. So and then you can see the full Singapore, the view is beautiful. And this one in there, you can see in the skyline. So they're the same architect, which is he loves to have these kind of uh, steel structures. And main thing is like the steel structures and glasses um, he loves to have the uh, sunlights, the direct lights, and everything comes in the building. It gives you know, more uh, interesting, even though you are inside the aircon room, but you can still feel the sun and everything. The nature is always there. The next one is um, another interesting building, which is still in the same place as the Marina Bay area. Uh, it's called as a sale. It's a, it's a private condominium. And uh, it's also it's a beautiful, the architect's designs is actually is a US architect. It's a beautiful design in every aspects. They really want to make it as an iconic and a dramatic uh, building in Singapore. So they also want to include in the skyline. So this has been included in the side skyline also. So you can see it's like um, uh, the apartments and the condominium is like very, very beautiful. And also they have a 70 stories then they have, uh, uh, mm, you can see the Singapore view, they have a decks to view whole Singapore. So this area is actually is lots of tall building, lots of high rise buildings, I can say it's a tall buildings, high rise building and office and uh, uh, residential. So it's in a peak area in Singapore, center of city, near to the city, Singapore. The next one is another iconic building, which is also is like, a, uh, high rise is also come condominium residential. Singapore have this kind of a style, which is is below you have a commercial and above they have a residential. So the the commercial is open to the public, so everybody can use the commercial areas, the restaurants, uh, whatever activities they have, the uh, shops and com other commercial items. Then they have a car park, and uh, the car park is mostly is a multi-story car park. The multi-story car park will be used for for the residents and also non-residents. You can see this one also is uh, have a very big podium and you name it, whatever things is supposed to be inside the building, uh, everything is inside. They have a uh, connecting um, towers and uh, they have a uh, uh, place to have a uh, different, different activities. So they have a level two, level three, there's a different activities was going on. So this one is actually is uh, same like in an area of uh, Singapore center point as a city area, uh, Shenton Way. The next one is, ah, it's another interesting area, which is Garden by the Bay. 
you can see this one also in the skyline is actually is totally is uh, just a garden beautiful garden so they just connected with the two rivers in uh, singapore so just make it as a beautiful big garden is about one, 101 hectares uh, 25 250 acres so it's fully flowers and beautiful and just you enjoy the domes and everything they have a waterfall they have uh, the dome uh, you can walk around and spend your time so this is also an, an attraction for tourist people and also for the singaporeans and they have lots of uh, recreations outdoor recreation and uh, they have uh, commercial and retail things over there the next one ah, this building i chose is because whatever we saw is all as a private building this one is as a government building housing board development singapore is full of uh, apartments so it's like the population is very high and also the area is very small so the government decided apartment is uh, a better way to cater everybody housing so the housing problem will be solved only by the apartments not the individual house even though we have individual houses like you no know, bungalows and uh, uh, row houses and everything is there but still the condominium i mean apartments is very famous and it is affordable for everybody the salary wise everybody can be afford to have an hdb i mean housing board department uh, housing board development houses so this one is actually you can see it's a totally is a condominium effect but it's a government project so it's um they have a common bag and uh, they have uh, provided about 50 to study. Actually, now in Singapore, they have all the uh, HDB, I mean, sorry for the short form, housing board development houses, everything is in a more than 40 story. They have uh, higher floors and high rise buildings. They change the design uh, to cater everybody and in different kind of uh, units, units in the means of like two bedrooms, three bedrooms, single bedrooms. So whatever you name it, you can have it in, in one, that one area, one block, one tower or something like that. So, so you can cater everybody and also they want to put every uh, race inside. There's something like uh, uh, others or Indian, Chinese, Malay. So everybody can buy inside and everybody can live in together. So the harmony and everything, they're focusing on that. So that's a, that's a reason why it's like the salary wise also, there won't be any difference. So we can af if you can afford to buy this one, you can buy it in a single room or double bedroom or triple bedroom, whatever it is. The next one is the most interesting things is I want to share in um, this uh, presentation because I really make I want to make it as a, as a useful one because when you see you want to see in architecture in Singapore, you can something you can browse it. So which is the information is already in the internet. It's not like uh, I'm going to provide and this one is that uh, you can browse all the information is coming in. But other than that, I really want to give uh, some other few uh, matters, which I had uh, selected two uh, interesting, and in, uh, I cannot say it's important, it's, it's happening in Singapore. Um, one is, uh, the first one is a green mark. Show you, green mark super low energy buildings. So the government is now is, um, actually they launched in 2005 and they're encouraging everybody all the construction i mean designs even in the conceptual uh, stage they start asking the designers and the contractors and everybody to incorporate this uh, green mark super low energy uh, they want to have this kind of buildings because they really want to use it like a um, uh, reduction of energy because singapore is, because it's it's getting hot you can see the other side of the world is happening so many things is happening so that's um they call this um global warming uh the host and layers uh, problems so this kind of things is happening so the climate change and everything so they really the government decided to have a building which is really using energy from the uh, the nature so you normally when you see the houses you're always looking for some good ventilation then the, the water and other resources will be used as minimal so this is the encouraging in the renewable energy there is mostly is in all the buildings you can see in singapore nowadays um and also is improving in indoor and outdoor so i uh, prepared a few slides to show you how they are positioning so the natural lights and the trees and other natural things is inside the project, so which is help you to get the ventilation and also the air circulation. 
so they can use the minimal energy. Now they we started using the solar energy also. Then uh, when we the intro, intro is 2005 and until the 2018, now we have uh, implemented in all the buildings, almost all the new uh, builds, you can see the SLE green marks. Next one. This one is uh, just for an info that how we can achieve the low energy buildings. So as you can see, you can see there is a can have a mechanical ventilation to have to, to control the airflow when you have the and also the sunlight and everything. So then, uh, of course, the solar energy has been using in everywhere. So here also we started using it. Then uh, this uh, project which we did in it's, it's my company project which I which I have also in um, have in the design and also the executions. Uh, so this one is actually as something like a commercial retail. They have a restaurants and everything. So you can see that the natural ventilation and the natural lights, and also we try to put some uh, landscape inside the building. So which is gives a more uh, and also like you have a vibrant feeling, not you are sitting inside one cubicle or whatever. The next one is uh, this one is a nursing home. So yeah, of course, you know, in a nursing home, you, see you badly need a lot of natural lights and everything because there's lots of sick people inside. So they should not get bored and uh, uh, the air con, sometimes the air, air condition, the old people cannot take it. So we really incorporated this one is in a lot of SLE items inside the building and also outside of the building so they can enjoy the fitness area and everything. Uh, this one is actually uh, another interesting building in the Park Royal Hotel and Resort. It's a commercial building. You can see it's a beautiful building. It's actually it's a new building also 2013. They only they have a separate phases to complete the project because of the soil and everything. It really gave them a hard time to construct the building. So here you can see the SLE, the total beautiful point. Okay, so you can see these are the areas they really incorporate the SLE inside the building. And also they have a different shape, the, land, the landscape areas and also the built up areas. Above is a hotel and resorts. Below is a commercial, which is like restaurants and other commercial items. You can see the restaurant the shops and everything. This one is coming up project, which is a government project, residential building. You can see now the Singapore have a style of creating a, a cluster. So when they come in with a few blocks, so when these blocks, they have other items like a fitness area, senior citizen area, uh, for a child, children's school, like, you know, for small nursery schools and everything, and the shops, a different kind of shops, commercial items, retail shops, and restaurants, everything include the in, inside that cluster. So this is the cluster they have made. This one is in a process because of the COVID has been delayed. Uh, you can see this building is a housing board development building, which is for the normal citizen, not for the foreigner, uh, it's for the local people. So it's now, now the cluster has become more uh, interesting and also they have uh, incorporated all the, the green marks inside the building and also the cluster area. The next one, okay. The next one I chose other one is uh, the second point of Singapore, which is they are doing lots of precast buildings. Uh, is uh, is um, all the apartments, the HDB, I mean the housing board development buildings. Everything is mostly all the precast building because they find that precast is more easier to do, and also um, it's giving a cost effectiveness and also is a uniform design. I mean, sizes, there won't be any variation when they do the construction. So everything is made in the factory. They just come and install the uh, building inside, you know, just putting in a Lego. So this kind of uh, thing is really reducing and just uh, transport. So only the transport and other things is like a minimal, minimize the wastage and everything. So you can see in the slide is like, the manpower also is, has been reduced in the construction side and they really want to go for the zero accident. So they concern more about the safety and everything. So this kind of a building is really help them. I mean, the prefabricated things is really help them to do the 
work very fast. Normally, last time is they will take about five years to complete one one cluster of buildings and everything. Now is they finish in within three years. So the two years has been saved and uh, prime maintenance and everything. Easy to maintain also because uh, apartments is you always have a maintenance issue. So this one is really helpful to maintain also. The next one is a spa, uh, smart based mold. This is also is something like uh, you will uh, have a uh, prefabricated. This is using for the mostly in the one side of the building front facade, different different facades. You just make the mold and you go and fix there in the side. The, the other one is the most interesting one, which is doing a 3D modeling, which is can be done in a, what you have in the CAD and CAM. It's so automatically incorporated inside, then they just do the design and you get it the building. So now we have this uh, large panel slab, which you can see in the um, uh, it's a one interesting matter in this uh, automated precast uh, production system. Where I'm working, they have a few contractors. One of the contractors has this machine, and when they do, we got, got to see the things, how they are doing it. And uh, it's uh, really, you know, uh, as a something like a very interesting things is happening, then one model is happening in a one day, then just one house is within the concrete and everything. The, the other interesting topic which I took for this one. And not but least, this few projects which I have uh, done in my company, which I, I cannot say that I'm the only one it's designed because, you know, is when you study, you got a chance to design your own building. Then small scale building, yes, of course, you have got an opportunity to design your own building. But when you come to this kind of a bigger company or when you're working for companies, so, so lots of people's inputs is inside. So definitely. So this is an uh, opportunity to, because the base and the concepts, are, uh, everything is, uh, I, I came up with that. And this is my previous company project. Uh, it's actually is in, uh, it's in Singapore. It's a row houses and um, the requirements is a normal row house. So they want to have uh, something like a different in a design day. So they want uh, that the, uh, every houses have, you know, they want to go inside that swimming pool directly or something like that. So every houses in the row houses, we have a swimming pool to, you know, just go and slide in something like that. So that's what we design here. The next one is a, is a chalet. Uh, this is also in Singapore. Uh, this one also we have incorporated lots of uh, greenery because it's a resort. So you're just uh, you know, going for a relaxing and a time, spending time with your family and a different kind of, so there's a lots of activities, fitness corners and a golf course and everything's there. Then they have a beach. So beside this, is, this one is near the beach area. So it's like you have a beach activities and everything. So we have catered that places for that particular area. activities also. The next one, this one is uh, something like the same kind of a row house, but it's in a beautiful place in a Vietnam. So it's something you can see the sea view. So this is also we have uh, similar to the design which I last time designed. So I got the same project again to do. The next one is a Myanmar project. This one is a um, commercial building and also they have on top, they have a residential. Uh, below they have a car park and also the commercial items and the retail shops and whatever the office buildings, everything is there. So it's like uh, on top they said uh, they have a uh, residential then the residential also have a uh, different different designs and different different different, different requirements is something like a two bedroom single bedroom and something then uh, is uh, is also so connecting with the each other towers they love they love nowadays they love, they love towers so the towers everything is connected with each other and they give a green space that tower is when they connecting to the tower you have a few activities there so that makes the building is more interesting and also is functionable. Whatever you do is interesting and also is supposed to be a functional building. So it's also a beautiful building, which is completed in 2016. I think uh, that's all my slides. Yeah. Okay, that's all my slides. Uh, thank you so much. Um, any other things? Um, uh, there is a question to that. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, there's a yeah. question from a student, Divya Shri. How does the Singapore government manages in balancing the green cover? Any specific designs for planning for that? 
that's a design I have to do. There is no specific designs. You have to incorporate the green mark inside the building. How you want to design is as a creator, you have to come up with a design. So we always go with a few proposals. So from there, they will pick up which one is, and they have a percentage of a green mark in that particular building. If there's just an example, if the percentage is 100, then you have to go with 30% of greens. So how, how you incorporating in your building? That's a, that's a calculation they normally do. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, there's another question from Juwan Jafar. Uh, is any interesting or modern construction technology for, followed in Singapore? And how is the sustainable architecture incorporated in the buildings of Singapore? OK, Singapore, when we started Singapore, when Singapore has been started as its own Singapore, so they come up with uh, so lots of apartments and everything. So the modern technology is lots of they're using, start using the precast. Even our older building, 40 years and 50 years older building also is a precast, but not like what in the factory model. It's mostly like you can see in the, uh, uh, you can see in the concrete uh, structures, but it's uh, mostly, nowadays it's mostly prefabricated. Sustainable architecture is actually, you can see in the museum, which really been still preserving, and uh, Malay houses, which Malay houses, they, they have the, they're still maintaining and also the temples, Indian culture, they still have the temple, they're still preserving it. So the sustainable architecture is, is they're preserving the thing and also the other side, they're creating the modern Singapore, which is the modern buildings in uh, I think I answered correctly. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Okay. And this question is from our Dean, sir. Uh, whether ST Architects yeah. Singapore take students architects for practical yeah. training, can any of my students apply? Uh, yeah, I understand that, but I, I can ask my bosses. <laughs> Maybe I can help down that. Uh, yeah, I will check with them. Thank you, ma'am. Because uh, it's like, what happens, I did my training in Singapore. The thing is, uh, I'm a local, I'm a born Singaporean, so it's easy for me to get the visa to come in. But when we do the practical training, it's a period or it's a short period. So Singapore, I don't know whether they have a particular visa to get up for particular things. So the the, com the company must have the uh, ability to recruit the students to have that kind of a training. So I'll check with the company whether they can do something, something like that. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, this is a question okay. from a student, uh, A.N. Gautam. Mm -hmm. Any post-graduation mm -hmm. opportunity in Singapore? In what way one should wow. apply? Okay, that's very easiest one. You can go to anywhere so or NTU website. You can directly apply from there. Uh, if they need any further information, uh, you let me know if you need a support from uh, local people, then I can arrange for that. That's not an issue. They have 80% uh, subsidy in the uh, fees and everything. So it's very easy and very straightforward for foreigners to apply. So you can just go to NUS or NTU, uh, whichever is uh, uh, your major you're choosing in. Uh, NUS is the National University of Singapore. NTU is National Technological University of Singapore. So you just put NUS or NTU. If you want, you can ask uh, Uma. I'll give her the link. So from sure. there, you can apply. Okay, ma'am. Uh, this mm -hmm. question is from our HOD. Uh, do yeah. Singapore architecture reflects vernacular architecture like Malay houses in today's architecture? And what is the impact of building automation in Singapore houses? Okay, now it's um, first question is about the Malay houses in today's architecture. Okay, so Malay house, Malay house. Last time is Malay houses, not, not only Malay houses, all the houses is, uh, we used to call is kampong, it's a village type of houses, which is something like, you know, the woodens and everything, the bamboos and kind of houses. So that kind of houses has been totally erased in Singapore. There is no houses like that, unless they have a private property hiding inside somewhere in Singapore, they have that kind of houses still maintaining it. But otherwise is all the private areas is become to Singapore's government's thing. So it's become like a apartments and everything. So as they still keep it as a monumental, as a Malay uh, cultures to show to their Malay kids and other, other race people. So they still have that one. But other than that, 
there's no much things to particularly to show the Malay houses uh, designs in Singapore. The next one is building automation in Singapore houses. It's really impact. So people love to have uh, all the modern technology. So here uh, we Singaporeans love to adopt all the modern technology, whatever you name it outside, they want to put in their house. So it's like, uh, so this building automation is actually is mostly in the uh, private houses, uh, condominiums and the single houses, with the bungalows types. Then even the um, our houses, which like a, a housing board department houses also, but it's only inside the houses, the automation is, uh, is uh, all the interior designers is doing it very nicely. And company are mostly offices have uh, incorporated this, this one. And it's really giving, um, they have a positive feedback on that. There is, a, and, and so far there is no negative feedback for the automations. I think that's the question, is it? I hope I answered well. Uh, Mama, there's another question from uh, Jeevana. What is the purpose of podium design in Park Royal Hotel? Okay, what is the purpose of podium design? Okay, the purpose, if you want to ask the purpose, is the correct purpose, you have to ask the creator who, because he didn't explain about that. <laughs> but mostly here, they are encouraging to have a podium because of uh, as a center space, which we all the people can gather together. And they love to have the events and exhibitions and other kind of activities. So they love to have these kind of podiums in all the buildings. So whenever you go to uh, Singapore buildings, you in a public building or in a private uh, condominium buildings or whatever, especially the restaurants and the hotels, they have lots of lots of uh, events are going on. So that uh, that is a podium is helpful for them to have that kind of an event and everything. You say whatever it is that, whatever the event is. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, another question mm -hmm. from uh, Uday Arnachalam. Uh, in, uh, in your views, in what way Singapore architects differ from Indian, Indian ones? And uh, what would you suggest for the younger students? Uh, <laughs> architects are our same. There is no different. Only the style of that particular country adopting. So you can take it as a, everybody knows is a Singapore is a very smaller country. So when you come in, because lots of Indians working in, you know, like me who studied in India, then come and working here. So like totally as a different thing when you see, even though I'm a born here, this is totally a different thing when you start working it. It's, there is no difference from the architects, only the design, uh, uh, the, com the country is asking you to what kind of a design they're asking you to design. That's the thing is uh, like, you know, you have to come with the apartments with the functional basis. So you have to go with like, you know, so normally in Singapore apartments, it's like the uh, first floor, which is called in, uh, in India as a ground floor, is wide deck because they want to have an even over there, like a marriage or a funeral or other party, but birthday parties or other activities, whatever activities. So it's, uh, they want to have the in, inside the white tech area. Then and you don't need to uh, go to the particular, uh, I mean, yeah, any restaurants or uh, exhibition or whatever. So you just, you can do it in your own, own, own area, own block, and you can invite your friends and relatives over there. So it's like, uh, that's the thing they incorporated because the space is very less. So when you go to, when, when we have an Indian life that's like, you know, we want to have any functions, we always go to the wedding hall or a big hall or something like that. Here we really have everything in the, our own block. So easy to give the address to our relatives or other people so they can come to our block, then have the fun over there, the decorations and everything. You can have the fun and until the 10.30 or 11 o'clock or whatever the timing is, then you can enjoy it. That's a difference. You can find it. Otherwise, architects are saying they are creators. So we just create the building according to the people's needs. And also, my concern is mostly it will be a functional one. It will be more useful for everyone to get everybody because you're really, because people constructing house is only one time, you know, they save all the money for the retirement. After that, they build the house and kind of things. So when you build the house like that, then it's supposed to be beautiful, functional, and satisfy all the needs, your requirements and everything. So whatever you're doing, whatever you 
getting it is something like you motivate in the way is like follow the rules and also do everything for them so it makes an iconic and a different from others what you are doing it's not uh, they always say like okay i put a pergola there uh, this one that one is is aesthetic is important but aesthetic with functional is more important so that's the thing you can take it as a suggestion for younger ones <laughs> i think i'm also young i'm not old so <laughs> thank you it is <laughs> my point also uh, a question from Siv Sanjan. I want to know about the roof style of Jewel Chang Airport, where, uh, from where they let the indoor waterfall out. OK, this one is uh, totally a technical thing, which I, I'm not very sure about it. If you want, I'll uh, get the information and I'll pass it to you. It depends company and uh, the safety reasons and everything. So I'll try to get the information for you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. I think with that, that is the end of our question and answer session. And uh, uh, Lakshita, can you just uh, go through the feedbacks? Please? Yes, ma'am, sure. Uh, the first feedback is from Mardeen, sir. Uh, wishes for the good presentation. <laughs> uh, you, next ma is from uh, uh, Divya Shri. Thank you, ma'am. It was an informative session for us to explore more on Singapore architecture. The next one is from our HOD, sir. Good presentation and well answered to all our queries. Best wishes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, that was a great lecture and uh, it will actually increase the perspective of how uh, it works in Singapore, actually, uh, the design of how it's been done. But thank you so much uh, for giving or uh, throwing a light on uh, those areas. Yes, uh, the presentation was very interesting and you have come down the way uh, you, you explained it is more understandable by the student. Okay, okay. We, we, uh, we just uh, make this kind of lecture series for the goodwill of the students. So it, it is uh, so explained that everyone could understand what it is. <laughs> Thank you, Ned. Thank you so much because yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the information I cannot give uh, very elaborately other than the design aspects which I understand because of uh, yeah, the copyright yeah, and very and nice anything. presentation. Uh, right? It was in the thank you so much. Thank you. The students could, uh, could uh, understand very well. Happy that good number of uh, alumni architects are also online in various capacities <laughs> like uh, faculty and also practicing architects from outside, looking into this particular program. Uh, with that, we'll uh, okay. over to Uma for our name. Thank you. Okay, thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, thank you. I request architect Bala question to propose here. Thanks. Good evening, ma'am. It's indeed a very good presentation, and it's uh, very nice to see you. Uh, so on behalf of our Department of Architecture and from our alumni team, we would like to extend our thanks for sharing your time with us and uh, enriching the day with a very good presentation. Uh, I want to thank, really thank our uh, uh, HOD and our dean for uh, arranging such an initiative. Thank you, all the participants, for being with us. And uh, please do keep supporting us. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. With that, uh, that's the end of the session. Thank you all.